I think a lot of hardcore comic book fans are in the same boat that I am, where it's really frustrating being a comic book fan these days. If you're in the comic shop every week, if you're reading new comics every single week, it's getting harder and harder to find good comics. Now, that is something that is quite frankly unacceptable in the modern comic book industry, especially with the massive amount of growth that we are seeing. You'll never hear me say comic books are dying because they're not dying. Comic books are actually thriving. Interest in comic books and the amount of comic book readers is greater today than it's really ever been. You know, in America, the history of America, even though there was a time when, you know, comic books published it over a million copies an issue, the interest in manga, scholastic, and other avenues for comic books are absolutely blowing up right now. But the interest in DC and Marvel aren't. You would expect those things to somewhat work in conjunction with each other. You know, once you've read enough of this manga or that manga, maybe you want to go check out Marvel or DC and you hope that you find a good comic book there and perhaps you start reading both or something like that. But I, what I get the feeling is, is a lot of people are, that have been reading DC and Marvel for a long time, maybe their entire lives, are having to look for other avenues to kind of fill in that void for their weekly comic book reading. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And I cover that here on the channel pretty much every single day. I certainly highlight the things that I think are going well. I like to tell people which comic books I think are great. That's why we do the show every Sunday here on the channel where we talk about the very best comic books every single week. But I think there's an overwhelmingly large amount of bad in comparison to the stuff that's good. I said it in a video not too long ago. There's a supply and demand issue in American comic books. There's an overwhelming supply of shitty comic books, and there just isn't a whole lot of demand for them. And that's not all that surprising. Not everybody wants to spend 4 or $5 a pop on a story that just isn't very good. Or a comic book that's not exciting. Or a comic book featuring two people talking in a restaurant for 14 pages. Not a lot of exciting stuff going on there. Now, there are a ton of problems, as I've mentioned. You know, There are certainly forced agendas going on within DC and Marvel. We've been experiencing that for years now. Events don't feel important at all. They're almost never impactful. It never feels like anything's ever led up to. They just decided we need an event, so they make an event, and then it always ends up disappointing. And there just aren't a whole lot of like really good comic book runs right now. And a lot of stuff obviously goes into that. I think there's a talent deficit right now. Comic book editors are overwhelmed by the amount of work that they had to do. We know that DC Comics editorial staff got gutted. Doesn't feel like they've replaced very many people, but they've kind of kept up the same amount of books that they had before. I have heard behind the scenes that Marvel also got rid of a lot of their editors, and they maintained a ton of, of new comic books that they're producing. So there's a lot of factors that go into this, and obviously things change over time. If you read a comic book from the 50s, it won't read like a comic book from the 70s, which won't really read by, like a comic book from the 90s, or even a comic book from the 2010s. But it hasn't been that long ago where we had not just a couple of really good runs. We're talking like, if you go read DC Comics Rebirth, for like 18 months, an overwhelming majority of DC Comics were at a minimum good. And a lot of them were far better than that. They were great. If you go back to the early 2010s at, at Marvel up to about, like, what is it, like 2014? It was even better. They were putting out so much good content. And it's not that old. And it's not all that long ago when these things were happening. So something has changed, and there's something that's really killing comic books right now. The real problem with modern comic books is there's no quality right now, or there's a severe lack of quality. And a lot of the things that we discuss here on the channel certainly pay, play big factors into that. But we can be honest with ourselves. I was reading Immortal Hulk, which definitely had some moments where Al Ewing was forcing some stuff in there, some agenda stuff, right? We got to hear about Bruce Banner's green privilege. We also saw the Hulk go after somebody because they had a, a gun. You know, there's a like a weird anti-gun message in there and stuff. And you know what? I can put up with that stuff because Immortal Hulk up until about issue number 22 or 23 was absolutely fantastic. That's one of the better modern comic book runs we've had. You know, there have been some really good a miniseries here and there, or even a really good story, but that was like a really, really great run. Unfortunately, it ended up going up to issue 50, and it just kind of tailed off there for a while. But I'm willing to put up with some bullshit if I'm getting a really, really, really good comic book. If you read Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil with Marco Cicchetto, that is a very well-written comic book, and it is fabulously illustrated. 
Like, uh, I don't know who was doing better, Marco Cicchetto on Daredevil or Joe Bennett on Immortal Hulk, but those are two very well illustrated comic books. They look fantastic, and the writing is really good on both of them. And guess what? If you go and you read Chips and Arnsky's Daredevil, there's a moment where Matt Murdock is guilty. Tony Stark because he's rich like you shouldn't have all that money you need to give it to the poor and it's like okay I, I get what you're going for but it was heavy handed but I'm willing to put up with that I don't care if there's a message that I don't necessarily agree with or I feel like I can roll my eyes when it's happening if a vast majority of everything around it I think is good it doesn't really bother me if Tom Taylor's Superman son of Kal-El was good from day one The very first issue was absolutely hot. The second issue was even better. When they announced that Tom Taylor's John Kent uh, was going to come out as as bisexual, he was going to have his first kiss with a boy, and you know all this stuff was going to be happening, it still would have made headlines, and people still would have made videos about it. But people would still be reading the comic book because it's good, and it's supposed to be a version of Superman. But everything around that comic book, even... You know, the heavy handedness with all the stupid messaging about uh, immigration and, and, uh, and climate change and all that stuff, whatever. If the story around that was good, I could put up with it. But the story around it is absolutely putrid. And that really, it shines a spotlight on all these what should be kind of little issues and makes them so much bigger due to the overwhelming lack of quality going on at DC and Marvel right now. There are a few runs going on at this very moment that I think are good. I've said that Joshua Williamson's Robin is the best ongoing series at DC Comics, and I maintain that. But I can tell you right now, if Joshua Williamson's Robin was coming out at the same time as DC Rebirth, it would have been on the chopping block. It's not that good. It's good, but it's just kind of pretty good. Today's market, it feels like I'm reading fucking Watchmen because everything else around it kind of sucks so bad. But if you put that up against all the stuff that was going on in DC Rebirth, what's the decision? Am I going to read Joshua Williamson's Robin or am I going to read Dan Abnett's Aquaman? I'm probably going to read Dan Abnett's Aquaman. Even though that wasn't the best run going on at DC Rebirth at the time, it was still really good. Even their middle tier stuff was severely high quality. Now we go over to Marvel. The series that I talk about at Marvel that I say is the best ongoing and I think it's Eclipse Daredevil at this point is Moon Knight from Jed McKay, Alessandro Capuccio on art. And I think the art is absolutely fantastic. Now, obviously, there's been less Moon Knight stories or classic Moon Knight stories than there have been Robin stories. So I think this this Moon Knight run might end up kind of going down as one of the better Moon Knight runs we've ever really had. You know, we're a good ways into it. It's really doing uh, well as far as the storytelling, the progression. I really like what Jed McKay is doing to make Moon Knight seem like a really cool character and make his universe really unique. But if you throw that thing in 2014, does it really stand out up against all the all of its peers at the time that are doing absolutely wonderful work? You got Hickman kind of in his prime. We got Rick Remender in there, Brian Michael Bendis before he shit the bed. Like there's a lot of really good stuff going on at Marvel at the time. I don't think people talk about Moon Knight back then, even though I still think it's a good run. But there's no competition really for these ongoing series right now if you think about the comic book stories that have gone on lately what's the last marvel comic that had everyone talking in a good way like oh my goodness can you believe this is going on wow you have to read this it's probably jonathan hickman's house of x powers of 10 obviously that was a weekly series and it lasted for what four months no no three months the 12 issues would have been three months It was three spectacular months. People were talking every single week. People were going to their comic shops for the first time in a decade because the word of mouth on Jonathan Hickman's House of X Powers of 10 was so strong. It was fantastic. And the good thing about that going on at that time was you had that uh, absolute carnage going on from Dottie Cates, which I do think kind of crapped the bed at the end, but was still kind of something really cool. So where you go in there and you get your House of X Powers of 10, you get that that copy of uh, absolute carnage going on with that venom series. And you got some really cool stuff going on. You have some reasons to come back to the comic shop, but there just isn't a whole lot going on right now. You're just like, Oh my goodness, I've got to get to my comic shop. I, I, if I don't get there on Wednesday before lunchtime, they might sell out of the comic book that I absolutely have to read today. 
Do you feel that way about any comic books right now? I feel that way about a couple of comic books, but they're not from DC or Marvel. They're indie books. You know, Kill Lock, The Artisan Wraith is a comic book like that for me. Nottingham from Mad Cave is absolutely a comic book like that for me. I'm really excited about the return of Barbaric. And anything really a Blaze puts out, I have to read that first thing on, on Wednesdays when those comic books come out. But it's not really coming out of DC and Marvel. And that's the real big issue. DC and Marvel are the market leaders. Where DC and Marvel go, the rest of the the, the, the industry kind of go with it. Now, there are some exceptions in there. You know, Dark Horse has been really smart and they've hedged their bets well to where they have a nice piece with Berserk, you know, into manga as far as volumes and whatnot. And certainly, Image Comics has done a really good job differentiating themselves. They got that Spawn universe going on right now. Feels like uh, Supermassive is getting bigger and bigger. But those are really exceptions to the rule. Outside of that, maybe something is killing the children. Doesn't seem like the, the House of Slaughter sequel series is doing as well. But there are a few comics that really feel like they're drawing people in, but they're just not DC and Marvel's comics. When's the last time DC put something out that felt like it was can't miss? Like the the last great DC story I read really was Superman 78, which is a limited series, and it was really heavily based in nostalgia. It wasn't heavily promoted. I don't think a lot of people read it. Before that, I would say the best story was Future State Swamp Thing, which was only two issues, was fantastic. Unfortunately, I just don't think Ramby's uh, follow-up Swamp Thing has been as good, but that is awesome, but it was only two issues. Before that, I think the last time people were really excited was Scott Snyder's Dark Knight's Metal, the first one, which I don't think is the greatest story in the world, but I understand why people were excited. There's a lot of kind of cool stuff going around there, and the best thing about Dark Knight's Metal was, you know, normally the superfluous bullshit that they throw on top of it is always the worst crap, especially Marvel. They're the worst about it. They just pile a crap on it. You're like, who do they... Why do they even make this comic book? There's nothing redeeming. There's nothing important about it, but they put the event name on it. But if you went to those Dark Knights Metal like tie-in books with like the uh, was it the Red Death? That character was awesome. That one shot was dope. I think that was Joshua Williamson. We had Dawnbreaker. That thing was awesome. There are there are a couple other ones out there. There was a there was a couple other anthology books that were kind of on top of it that really added some really neat stuff to Dark Knights Metal, and it felt like. People were really into it. You, know, you had Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo coming off of an amazing Batman run, and people were excited. But it's kind of been a long time since then, and also kind of signaled the death of uh, of DC Rebirth. But when's the last time people were excited for a DC series? Are you so excited or enamored with a DC comic coming out right now that you can't miss it? That every Tuesday you got to get to your comic shop first thing, you know, before lunch, so nobody else can get your copy, and you have because you have to read it. You don't want it spoiled or anything like that? I don't think anybody or that or an overwhelming majority of people don't feel that way about comic books right now coming out of from DC and Marvel because the comp the quality is just kind of lacking across the board. And if you go over to Marvel, I'll give this to DC. Even a lot of their shitty comic books look good. Most of Marvel's comics just all look bad. They either have a good writer and a shitty artist or a, a shitty writer and a good artist. Like, can't we just consolidate this stuff? You know, I kind of had that that discussion, how um, all the supply chain issues really could have been a godsend for Marvel to improve their quality. But the comic industry has a lot of problems right now. And I do think all these little things that we talk about here are absolutely magnified because there's nothing great out there that makes you forget about it. I can't ignore all the stupid stuff going on in the industry because there's three comic books from DC and there's two from Marvel and there's an event on the horizon that I just know is going to be good. So I can just kind of think about that. There's sometimes I might go, you know, a, a couple of weeks before I read something from DC or Marvel. I'm just like, whoa, that was that was really good. And obviously, we recommend some some good comics here and there, but there's just not much stuff coming out that just really blows your hair back from either publisher. And that's a really big issue with the industry. And I think that's why a lot of people are looking for alternatives and why a lot of people are walking away and they're seeing this tremendous growth going on in comic books, but somehow DC and Marvel aren't able to, to capitalize on it. Why aren't they growing along with it? It's clear that there's no priority put on quality. You know, events come out of nowhere. They put the worst writers on important characters. Now I'm more certain today than I ever have been that, 
the real change, like the comic book industry can't get better as long as C.B. Sabolsky and Jim Lee are in charge. I understand that there are corporate mandates out there, but you have to work within the structure that you're provided. There's a way to take corporate mandates and, and put in agendas into comic books and not make them unreadable. There's a way to work with a pay structure that maybe isn't quite as nice as it was a decade ago, but still find the best talent and really get good work out there. But it feels like they both kind of wave the white flag and they're just like, ah, if it happens, it happens. If, if this accidentally ends up being good, good on us. If it ends up being bad, like most of the other stuff, well, so be it. We said that we would get out 60 comic books this month, and that's what we did. And it just feels like everything's filler right now. But I don't know. I know I rambled on that one. Normally, these are much more heavily edited, and I have a lot more purpose to it. But, you know, it's just frustrating right now. And I imagine a lot of you guys are feeling the same way, but you're not, you're not, uh, you're not alone. A lot of people are feeling the exact same way. Even the shills out there that are, you know, talking about how great the industry is. They know that a majority of, of comic books coming out of Marvel and DC are absolutely dog shit. Even the writers at Marvel and DC know they're dog shit. You think B.I. Allen knows that they can't write comic books? She knows she can't write comic books. You think Tim Sheridan doesn't know that Teen Titans Academy was 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 shit? Yeah, he knows it was shit. He can read too. He's not, uh, you know, he's not stupid. He's just a bad comic book writer, unfortunately. Now, we can't always talk about the problems and not have solutions for that. Actually, this video is shockingly about two years old, and I talked about five ways that we could save the comic book industry. And a lot of these, these ways still pertain to the comic book industry today because they haven't done really anything. If anything, it's gotten worse. Definitely check this out. A little oldie, but goodie.